Well, good afternoon, my friends. Welcome to day 13 of the 31 Days of Horror 2019. I'm the Ice Lord, and we're going to watch Eyes Without a Face, made in 1960 by Jorge Franju, or George Franju. I'm unfamiliar with how to pronounce this name. It's spelled G-E-O-R-G-E-S. So I'm assuming that it's Jorge or George. Um, let me know in the comments below if you know how to pronounce this guy's name. This movie is uh, considered a classic in the horror genre, and it ended up inspiring a Billy Idol song, from what I understand. Well, let's take a look and see what we find out. Eyes Without a Face. Well, the movie opens up with a lady driving by the Sand River and dropping a, another woman's body into the river. The next day, seems a, a doctor of some sort is called into the morgue and identifies his daughter's body. Meanwhile, there's another guy coming in. His daughter's also missing. But the doctor fellow seems to be very kind of sh short with the guy and indelicate. I have a feeling there's a situation of like body switching happening here. Something of that nature. As it turns out, the good doctor is doing some really shady stuff. He's faked his daughter's death and used a person who died in surgery as her body double. And he seems really kind of harsh on her, even though he seems, it almost seems like he's trying to do right by her, but when she looks up at him without her mask, he makes her look away and tells her to get into the habit of wearing this mask that hides her facelessness and I can understand how that would hurt her you know personally the music feels a bit off to me with the exception of this piece that's playing in the background right now the opening theme and some of the other music that's just kind of filled the gaps recently is very it's a little too upbeat for this type of story um, so that's probably gonna count against it in the hundred point scale but this particular piece I like and it seems to fit uh, it's Christiane's um, uh, her her score if you will it's her her theme Turns out the doctor has his secretary doing the dirty work of abducting these girls, and they seem to be performing botched um, facial reconstructive surgeries or face replacement, face transplants, and this obviously isn't the first girl for them to uh, have abducted and most likely killed and having taken their face off. I'm not sure exactly how the girl got the face injuries that she did, but um, I think it might have been from some sort of car accident, um, possibly one caused by the father. I'm not sure if I'm right on that, though, so... We'll leave, leave that as an open-ended question for now. Maybe it's just the way facial bandages look, but it seems like the main character from Goodnight Mommy was inspired by Edna Postop from Eyes Without a Face. Very similar looking. Edna being one of the girls who was abducted for the 
face transplant on the doctor's daughter. The doctor in this movie... The doctor in this movie seems to have quite a high opinion of himself. It seems that it's less important that his daughter got her face back and more important his, uh, his success in the surgery. Uh, for instance, he's, he's kind of just an unfeeling asshole. He is trying to reassure his daughter. He tells her, smile, smile, not too much. And then he starts uh, taking a closer look at her, asking her if she's been using makeup. And just, he seems to be very possessive and have a bit of a uh, god complex in a way. Um, and also, his secretary, possibly his wife, she also owes the doctor... Uh, so much because he's restored her face as well and he's able to uh, use this hanging over her head so she can help him do the evil that he has to do in order uh, to abduct these young girls in order to restore his daughter's face. Seems as though the surgery ended up failing and Christiane has to go back into the mask. And the young lady who provided the face killed herself in the meantime, so it was all for nothing. Looks like the cops are going to use a girl who got in trouble recently to try and bust out the doctor and his shenanigans. I just realized <clears throat> the doctor's secretary or Christiane's mom is also in Suspiria. She's one of the old witches at the dance school. The 1970s version of Suspiria. Well, turns out Christiane is freed after all. I won't give away the entire ending, but the poor girl who lost her face regained her freedom at the end. I'm not too certain about my uh, 10 by 10 point scale because it seems like well with the exception of yesterday's movie Headless Eyes a lot of the other movies are scoring very similar in, uh, all in all and maybe I'm just not uh, scrutinizing the movies well enough but time will tell we'll give it one more day tomorrow if I get the same reading then we'll overhaul the point system. Here's how Eyes Without a Face scored. Lead performances and minor performances, I both gave a 7.5. So out of the 20 point performances category, I got 15. Picture quality, I gave a nine. It's uh, excellent picture quality. The sound design, I gave an 8, uh, considering the time period, they did quite a bit with the sound. Wasn't as impressed with the music, with the exception of one piece, so I gave it a 6. The plot, I gave an 8, a pretty well fleshed out story, uh, but they left out enough to be mysterious, I guess. The setting, I gave an 8 kind of set in a big mansion and uh, also in a hospital, sometimes in the city streets. Production, I gave an 8. I thought it was a well-produced movie. Editing, pacing, I wasn't really pleased with the pacing. The editing was fine, but the movie was a little too slow for my liking. The special effects slash monster effects which, when we combine them together into one, they become a single category of 20 points total. Uh, it only got a 12, and if, if it had been uh, 1960 when I graded this, it may have been higher, but seeing the effects today doesn't really... Um, it just it doesn't stand up overall. 
the face transplant scene was um, probably revolutionary for its time, but it doesn't hold up today. Uh, one good thing about the makeup was Christian's mask. Um, you know, it was ghostly, uh, mysterious, and sad, and I like that quite a bit. So that's where most of the points are going to. There wasn't a whole lot of special effects to be done in this movie, but most of the points went to the ghastly mask that Christian's character wore for the better part of the movie. Uh, and the total, the grand total, is 79. So basically it's a C plus or a B minus. Um, and that seems to be my average grade for most of the last few movies, with the exception of Headless Eyes and whichever one I've got a D minus before. Anyways, my memory is running short. But... Thank you for watching the video. I really do appreciate you visiting our channel and watching the videos. But hoping you're enjoying the 31 Days of Horror and uh, hoping you're preparing for Halloween in a jovial way. Make sure you put a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the channel put on the notification bell so that way you get word when we release new videos and tune in tomorrow for day 14 I believe a whole boatload of movies will be coming in the mail over the next few days so it's anybody's guess what exactly we'll be watching for this week but stay tuned and you will find out and hopefully we'll have some great titles anyhow I've been your Ice Lord. This was Eyes Without a Face, day 13 of the 31 Days of Horror for 2019. See you next time. Bye-bye.